everyone. Welcome to Turning the Verge. I'm your host with you, Sarah Wing, and today I have with us the TJR Trio, and that includes TJR, Reverend Mark, and Tony V with us. Thank you so much for being with us, guys. Glad to be here. How are you guys doing? We're doing Good. okay. Good. Doing Good. all right, yeah. Good. Well, it's so nice to have you. You have a new CD that just came out, and it's called Another Roll of the Dice here. Can you tell me a little bit about it? Um... Just, uh, you know, I call the music neoclassic rock because it's just very classic rock oriented, very guitar driven oriented. And Tony and Mark are both on it, along with some other really great musicians. And uh, not much more to say than that, I guess. I don't know. And you've got lots of original music on here as well, don't mm -hmm. you? All original songs except for we've done a cover of Hey Ya by The Outcast. Oh, you have? Yes, but well, otherwise all original songs, yes. That's very exciting. And so tell me, you have two songs here about MTV. Did you have an experience with MTV? Well, uh, I wrote the song. It's called Peace, Love, and Don't Trust MTV. And I just wrote it because uh, I just was watching MTV and I thought, what happened to the music? And why do they call it? Why, you know, at the time that I wrote, of course, they still had the, uh, uh, they still called it music television. They've recently taken that off their title, music television. But I kept thinking, where's the music? It just seems to be a lot of reality shows now, a lot of game shows. And, uh, and I thought, why are you calling yourself a music channel? And I just thought it was something, I just had to make fun of it. Can't help myself sometimes. Well, you have some awesome music, and Thanks. you do have influence from Neil Young, right? Do you want to tell me about that experience? Oh, well, yeah, yeah. Um, I was on uh, Neil Young's Living With War album. Uh, it, it was probably it was a great experience. I got to, uh, I was at the Capitol Records studio for about 12 hours singing backup vocals on his Living With War album. And uh, it was just one of those experiences that just, you know, I get a call uh, at 11 o'clock at night. And I'm asked, if, you know, can you come down to Capitol Records the next day to sing background vocals? And I was like, yeah. And it's just, you know, something like that just happens. It's very surreal. And you're there in a room for, for, for 12 hours with Neil Young uh, with a whole bunch of other, uh, it was there with 100 other singers. Mm -hmm. And we're all, we're all singing as the backup choir. Well, you have an awesome conglomerate of style that comes together and sounds so very nice that our audience will get to hear later. How was it that you all met? Let's see here. Wow. Okay. That's <laughs> we a got a story question. here, huh? Um, Reverend Mark and myself, we've known each other seventh probably grade. since we were in the seventh grade together. Oh, wow. Yeah, we've, we've been, around we've here? Been, you grew we've up been friends here? since kids. We grew up in, in, Valley. Valley. in the San Gabriel Valley. Okay. And we've known each other since we were teenagers. And okay. uh, Tony, I got to know through a band uh, that uh, we were both in together called Project True. Yeah, Rob. Yeah. Project True, which how was a... How old were you when you started that band? Oh, that band was maybe, what? 15 years ago? 15 years ago, yeah. yeah. And we were... Uh, it, was, it was a 12-piece funk rock band, you know, along the lines of, let's like, say, Earth, Wind, and Fire, Chicago, that type of thing. And, uh, and we got to know each other through that band. And Tony is also a recording engineer as well. And Excellent. currently, he's a recording engineer for with Basement Records. Sure, sure. And, well, independent. No. Huh? You're, you're an independent. Well, okay, okay. You're working. Okay, well, you work for them a lot. But uh, and so we've done off and on done recording projects in and out, you know together, uh, either him calling me in or us working together, you know, uh, over these over these many years. Yeah. Very cool. And how about writing together? How does that collaboration take place? Well, right now, <laughs> right now, I've been writing all the songs. Okay. It's been pretty much a, a situation where I write a song, I bring it to these guys, and I say, you know, here's how it is. But one thing I don't do, I try not to do, is I try not to say... It's a lot easier that way, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> one thing I try not to do is I try not to say, uh, now, uh, Mark, play exactly this on your bass. Mm -hmm. I just say, here's, here's the chords to the song. He'll send me a little scratch track. Do what you're going to do. Do what you're going to do. You know, Very nice. I don't like to tell other musicians... I'd like to tell Tony, well, I want you to play it exactly like this. Just do what you're good at. Do what you're best at. I, I always like to do that with the musicians. Just do what you're best at. You know, uh, so long as you're not bumping into the furniture too much. Mm -hmm. You know, there's that old actor's, gotcha. line, that old actor's oh, yeah. line, you know, learn your lines, don't bump oh, into yeah. the furniture. You know, so long as you're not bumping into the furniture too much, I just, I like to let me, because I hate when other musicians tell me, well, play it exactly like this. You know? <laughs> right. You need some creative yeah. input, don't you? And, yeah, and I think their creative input helps flesh out the songs from that point. And so now it's, it's probably very easy because you've been playing for quite some time, I can tell. You guys are just incredible together. Mm -hmm. How long have you been playing individually? Um, me since all my life. Probably since high school. Yeah. yeah. Since high school. Yeah, since grade school. Yeah. Grade school. Okay. Wow. You started younger than us, yeah. Got, got my first guitar in the eighth grade. Yeah. I started Tim taking piano, piano lessons, piano lessons in high school. High yeah. school, yeah. yeah. 
started taking piano. I used to practice that. at my grandma's place, and yeah. I actually play guitar. I play bass now, but uh, I still write when I do. It's all on guitar. But uh, we might collaborate in the future, though. It's, that could happen, possibly. Where we, I, I could see it happening eventually, where I'm going to bring in an unfinished idea, just a riff, into a rehearsal, and then we will collectively, as a group, then write together. I see that happening. That that will probably happen in the future. And now, Amazon.com had a, an interesting way of describing your music. They said you had input from the greatest elements of rock and roll, and they mixed it with a bit of humor and sharp wit. Now, explain that. How, how does, do you claim that is true for your music? Well, I was really glad to read that little quote. I really like that. That's why I really like that great. quote. So I put it on my website. I liked it so much. Um, I think they just recognize that there's a certain sense of humor to some of the songs that a lot, a lot of the songs that are right. Not all. And there are serious ones. Yeah. But, you know, songs like Peace, Love, and Don't Trust MTV. Jesus loves you. Everyone else thinks you're an, you know, a word, a word we can't use here on TV. And uh, songs that just have humorous titles to begin with. But also, one of my, one of my other big uh, songwriting influences, a lot of people don't realize this, is Chuck Berry. Chuck Berry. And Chuck mm -hmm. Berry was the first uh, rock and roll storyteller songwriter. All his songs told stories. And they also had a certain ironic sense of humor to them. If you looked at them closely and read between the lines, there were lots of certain ironic uh, comical bits to it. You know, uh, songs like, um, uh, uh, what's that one? Uh, no particular place to go. Right. The whole song's about this guy trying to make it. He's trying to somehow make the moves on his girl, but he can't because he can't get the seatbelt off of her. And it's just, <laughs> off of her, off of she's in the car, he can't get the seatbelt off. It's just, just, there's just little kind of humorous, ironic stories in his songs. And that's always, that was a huge influence on me. So I, I kind of write a lot of times from that perspective, where there's just a certain, certain baby, level of humor. Baby Please, irony. kind of. Baby Please, yes. Baby Please is that's a song. Off the latest CD. Off the latest CD. It's, it's about. We, can we talk about that? Yes. Okay, well, it's about. No. It's about oh, this. Well. <laughs> it's about a gal. Okay. <laughs> who, who likes to be spanked. Well, well. <laughs> No, no, it's about, not behaving. It's about this guy. It's about this guy who's got this girlfriend who's really, really mean to him all the time, and he finally gets fed up with it. Her, yeah. he puts her, he puts her over his knee. He, he spanks her one, and turns out she's into it. So she starts acting even worse. So she'll, so he'll do it more. Well, and he's well, not into it, you though. Know. But uh, anyways, by, it's just, by the it's end just, of the song, everyone just, is. At but. the end of the song, he's running away from her. At the end of the song, he's running away from her, and she's trying to get him to do it more. And it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just little farcical comedies. Just farcical comedies. Gotcha. And but, are these uh, influenced by life events, or <laughs> are these just are these uh, epiphanies? You know, Billy Joel once said, "If half, even half the stuff that I wrote about really happened to me in real life, I'd be dead by now." Oh. And yeah, I, no, I'm. I look at myself as a storyteller. Mm -hmm. I try to think of comical situations. I try to think of, oh, that's an interesting story for a song. A title come to me. Uh, a title came to me the other day, uh, just uh, when my. My songwriting partner, Kathy, whom I write all my songs. I write all my songs with Kathy Barrett. And she helps me write the lyrics. And we talk about, we talk about these things in great detail and just you know, discuss the characters and the plot and the stories behind the songs. And we look at, we approach it as two writers who are writing a story you mm -hmm. know, for a movie or a TV show. And um, I, I remember one time I was just, we were just trying to get ready to go to a music industry function. I was trying to get dressed up. And I, and I was saying, how do I look? And she, and she said to me, oh, you're worse than a woman. And I thought, you know, that's a great idea for a song. We should write a song with that title where a woman says that to a guy. You know, that'd be funny. And, you know, it's, you know, it's, 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 just, it's just, you know, stuff like that, you know. And uh, I look at myself as just more of a storyteller. It's not autobiographical stuff. It's just, you know, you observe that's a good something. Disclaimer. You, you, know, you observe stuff. Or you think of a funny situation. You think of a funny situation. You think of a farcical situation, and you put that into a song. How do you think of these funny situations? Do you have your, uh, influence from your parents, or did you grow up in a highly comical family? You get them from everywhere. Because these them, are funny situations. You, you get them from real life. You get them from reading stuff in the news. You get them from watching TV. Uh, you just get it from everywhere. I mean, just life is all around you, and that's what most songwriters do. They, they, get, they, they draw from everything going on with them. Uh, you get a few people who are just really, it's all about what they're feeling and what they're thinking. Mm -hmm. And once in a while, I do think about those songs. Songs like Jesus Loves You, you know, we've all encountered people who have been jerks to us. And every one of us is a jerk to somebody at one point in our life, whether we want to be or not. We all do things like that. Um, but you just, you, just, you, just, you, know, you just observe these things going on in real life, and you realize that's good material for a song. And you try to, and, but usually I try to find a somewhat humorous spin on it so that it's not too serious. But, you know, I've written some serious songs, so. There are, I've, written, I've written a few you know, heart-wrenching songs. They're, they're there, too. 
you know. Well, they certainly are relatable, and I've really enjoyed the music set that you just played prior to Thanks. our show that our audience will get to see now, and we'll be right back.
Welcome back to Turning the Verge. This is Sarah Wing here with TJR. And we have a very interesting story with you guys. You had a video that went viral on YouTube regarding American Idol. What happened with that? Okay. Well, I wrote a song called American Idol. And uh, I wrote the song because people would say, why don't you audition for the show? I'd always say, I can't. They discriminate against people of age. People would say, you're kidding me. I said, no, it's true. You have to be under 29 years of age to audition for that show. And people would say, well, that's not right. And I'd say, you're right, it's not right. So I wrote a song about it. We made a very funny music video, which interspersed clips of the show with me performing the song so it would look like I was on the show. Um, <laughs> in At first glance, it definitely does. <laughs> it fools a lot of people. Uh, within four days, we had 25,000 views. On the fourth day, we were pulled from YouTube. Uh, the company, that, the international media giant that owns American Idol, uh, said we were violating their copyright because we were using clips from the show. And you might say, well, that's probably true. But if you go to YouTube, you'll find that millions upon millions of people are broadcasting clips of American Idol on YouTube. They're not being taken down. They're also not being critical of the show. Um, so we were, we were taken down after four days, and we actually didn't fight them. We reshot the video using puppets in place of the video clips from the show. <laughs> and that video was put up there. It got taken down within two days. And my channel, my YouTube channel was torn, was taken down also, once again claiming copyright infringement, even though we didn't use any of their media. At this point then, you the know... The song was too good. They yeah. couldn't handle that. <laughs> it was becoming it was an epidemic critical. around the nation, critical. wasn't it? Was it was too critical of their precious show. And so, so to quote Bugs Bunny, uh, um, <laughs> I, I basically said, this means war. And we enlisted, help, we enlisted some legal help from the Electronic Frontier Federation, who, who uh, basically challenged their claim. Um, they, did, they dragged it out for about two months. They dragged it out legally before they finally had to acquiesce and before, they, uh, before YouTube finally brought both my channel back and my video back. And, and so, the original video. And the original video, yes. They brought everything back. Thank and, goodness. Uh, and, yeah, so, we've, yeah, and so, so, yeah, so now the video is up on YouTube, and you can just go to YouTube and, and search TJR American Idol, and you'll find it. It's a funny video. It's hysterical. I was laughing like crazy. I thought Thanks. it was awesome. Thanks. And I thought it was an excellent inspiration, too, because it is a bummer. We miss out so much on performers above, what was it, 29, 29. you said? Yeah. You know. Um, you That's know, that, your prime. You're just getting into it. Exactly. Musicians, if, if musicians, if we do our jobs right, we get better as we get older, you know. Um, and also, uh, you know, as, as far as songwriting, you know, I was listening to, to Merle Haggard's most recent album, and there's this great song where he sings, he looks back on his whole life, and he sings about, he sings with a wisdom that only comes from being as old as he is. And a songwriter who's a 16-year-old kid, I'm sorry, you, a 16-year-old kid can't write a song like that, nor, mm -hmm. can they, nor can they sing with that level of experience behind them. It's a totally different perspective. And it's totally perspective. And there's nothing, and like I said, doesn't mean there aren't really talented 16-year-olds out there. There mm -hmm. are. doesn't mean there aren't really talented 18-year-old songwriters out there. You know, what, uh, uh, Stephen Tyler of Aerosmith, he wrote Dream On when he was, what, 18, I think? Mm -hmm. 18? I mean, you'd, think, you'd have thought he was in his 50s, you know, because that song is just, mm -hmm. just communicates so much experience. Um, it's brilliant. It's genius, you know, but... But uh, to just say, well, you're, you're over 29 or, you know, we have such a youth-obsessed youth media right now that mm -hmm. I'm waiting for them to start marketing music to babies very soon. You know? <laughs> it might happen. It might happen, they have, yeah. They have Mozart for babies. We might, so. have ba we might have baby singing stars. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> well, what's your favorite original song that you've written, and what does it mean to you? <sighs> well, it's usually the latest one uh, for me because, yeah, it's always the newest one. I don't know. Some of my favorites, of course, American Idol I'm really proud of. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and one of the songs that, uh, I, uh, that we performed for you uh, earlier in the show, uh, Mexico, which is a mm. particular favorite of mine, which is one of my serious songs, actually. But once again, tells a story about a desperate outlaw, you know, racing towards the border, trying to outrun the law. And it's just got this very intense kind of desperate feeling to it. And like I said, I've never, I've, I've never been, a, been a criminal. I've never tried okay. to outrun the law. It's not autobiographical. <laughs> I'm just telling a story. Right. Know? Yeah. Or you could feel that maybe in a different way. Maybe you're trying to outrun American Idol. I'm, maybe I'm, yeah, 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 because they're trying to get me. Yeah, they're, they're knocking at my door. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> well, do you guys think you're going to enter in a different competition since you can't do American Idol? Can you do Americans, America's Got Talent? Or what is your focus right now? Is it touring in L.A. and Orange County? 
I think right now, just you know, uh, just I think we want we want to record uh, an album. Of course, we want to sit and record an album collectively. The last album was done. Uh, you know, they, they were all on it, but we weren't officially mm -hmm. a band yet. Uh, but we want to record an album as a band, and we want to try to just grow our fan base here locally, and and we just want to also just try to just expose the music to more people. Excellent. And what do you hope that a listener will walk away with with your music? Um, I'm hoping they'll just really like the songs. They'll yeah. be stoked. You know? Yeah, I just hope they really <laughs> like the stoked. songs. They're I really, was stoked. I hope, I hope that, you know, the songs... I can tell. <laughs> But yeah, I can't ask. I can't ask for much more than that. It's just that just I, that these songs become some of their favorites as they as as they as it become you know as as they grow with the music as they listen to it that it becomes some of their favorites. That's all I can ask for. Well, excellent. Yeah. It was wonderful having you guys Thanks. with us today. Thank you so much for being here. This is TJR. You can Google TJR and find them on their website TJR.com. Was uh, it TJRmusic.com? TJRmusic.com, yeah. and uh, you can find them on Facebook as well. Search TJR. And it was great having you guys here on Turning the Verge. Thanks. And we'll see you next time. This is your host, Sarah Wing. Bye. Thanks so much, guys. No
name comes to man and jobs to bring the guests. He chases off the massive wing and eats up all the rest. There's a kid in the necessity, and she makes a killer sound. You hear a scream like a meal through the wind, she blows that hump around.